All right, the first thing I would do is I'd perform my before, during, and after procedures. I would attend to agency policy. I would identify um, the client by two identifiers, his wristband, by his name and date of birth. I would um, perform hand hygiene. I would perform standard precautions. I'd provide privacy. Oh, and do biomechanics, make sure they're good. Um, the, promotion, the promotion of care um, for the cast is it promotes healing, it um, provides slash de prevents slash decreases muscle contractions, it provides immobilization, and it supports the limb above and below um, the fracture sites. The cast care, um, you got to keep your splint or cast dry. Um, if it gets moisture in it, it's going to get weak. Um, and you can't submerge it in water at all. If you have to take a shower um, and it's your arm, put like a plastic bag over it and try to keep your arm outside of the shower. Um, you're gonna wanna inspect the cast regularly. Um, you wanna make sure it's not cracked or um, has any developments of like, um, I don't know, moisture and uh, like bacterial sites. If it looks like it's degrading, you need to go in. Um, you want to elevate it and apply ice to the fracture site to um, make the swelling go down. And you want to, um, the swelling can actually create a pressure under the cast. And you want to look for the six P's of um, compartment syndrome, um, pain. You want to make sure you're not um, feeling that the splint or the cast is too tight. And with parlor, you want to make sure um, it's not pale. For pulselessness, you want to look for numbness and tingling. Um, you want to prevent that. So if you start to feel it, you need to call your doctor immediately. Um, and then you want uh, para, I can never pronounce this right, um, parasthesia, which is um, the burning and stinging feeling. Again, call your doctor as soon as you feel it. Um, you want pressure um, because it, you don't want pressure. You want to look for pressure because it, um, causes excessive swelling below the cast. Uh, paralysis is the sixth one. It is the um, loss of active movement of the um, toes or fingers. Um, you're going to want the um, walking cast. You do not walk on a walking cast um, until it's completely dry and healed uh, about three days. Um, then there is the avoid the dirt. You don't want dirt to get in there, sand or any powders. You want to keep away from those. Um, itching, do not stick anything inside of it. Do not stick a pencil inside of it to itch it. Do not stick a container down to itch it. That is a no-no. And then there is the trimming. Um, do not break off any of the rough edges um, of the cast and do not uh, try to crack them off either. If they start to bother you, go to your doctor and see if they can try to sand it down or do something about it. And then um, there is the skin. You wanna inspect the skin around where the cast or the splint is to make sure it's not rubbing. Um, you don't want any abrasions there or any breakdowns. Uh, the purpose of traction is um, it stabilizes and realigns bone fragments. It helps reduce uh, pain in constricted muscles, joints, tendons, and skin. Um, it corrects stiff and constricted muscles. It, um, I confused those two. I apologize. I just realized that, um, it actually treats bone deformities and caused by the conditions, um, such as scoliosis and it corrects stiff and constricted muscles, joints, tendons, and skin. Um, it also will stretch the neck and prevent, um, painful muscle spasms. And I can't remember if I said this, but it helps reduce pain of fractures before surgery. Um, there are different types of tractions. With manual traction, I'm going to try to do it if I can. Uh, manual traction, it uh, aligns the bones prior to placement of the um, caster splint. So it's like when the doctor takes your leg and stretches it out manually. And then they <laughs> wrap it around. <laughs> and then there is the um, the skin traction. Skin traction is used as a um, temporary stabilizer for a broken bone. It's not going to be on there for very long. It's less invasive than the skeletal traction. 
All right, you're also going to apply um, splints and bandages or adhesive tape to it. So that way um, it's directly below the fracture and you're going to um, add weights to it. Um, it's going to kind of look like, I'm going to lay down on the bed real quick. Oof. Okay. So if I was laying down, there'd be a bar over me and my foot would be down there and there'd be weights at the bottom of my foot and it would be hooked up by a rope and a pulley system holding my skin and bone in place real quick before they adhesive everything to the cast. And then there is skeletal traction. Okay, Ugh, I'm getting back up. I'm gonna go back to my corner. The Katie corner. <laughs> um, skeletal traction is used mostly um, on the leg for the femur and thigh bones um, for fractures there. It um, involves placing a pin, wire, or screw into the fractured bone to help immobilize it. Um, you, they usually do this under local anesthetics. Anesthesia, oh my gosh, can't talk. Um, weights are also then attached to it like um, with the skin traction at the end of the pulley system. Um, you do, this is a timed procedure, that's what I was gonna say. This is a timed procedure and it depends on the outcomes. Um, if it's a bigger surgery or not. And then there is cervical traction. Um, cervical traction is used to gently stretch the neck muscles out. So it'd be opposite, like where my foot was on the bed. It'd be a pulley system with the weights and it'd pull my head in a nice, nice angle near my neck. Um, this is to help decrease muscle spasms and um, helps to immobilize it for healing. It's um, going to involve a metal brace um, if it is that's going to be placed around the neck and it's going to um, it's like that cervical collar, <laughs> if you will, after accidents. Um, it involves the metal brace. Like I said, it places around the neck. Um, it is then attached to a body harness or weights. Like I said earlier, the weights would be back there um, and it is helped to correct the affected area. <laughs>